Well, praise the Lord. He is worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, I I have so many things I would like to share. And like, I think about um, all the things that, you know, it's like God just keeps pouring in and hopefully I can pour out and more importantly, I'm not uh, interested in any other thing that God would uh, literally rearrange our lives, that He would be glorified, and that when it's all said and done, we would know Him. Not only individually, uh, which is important, um, but corporately, collectively, um, which makes it a family, which is what he has determined. It, it does really no good to have like 8 billion perfect people and they're not a family. It, it, it doesn't work. That in itself would tell you it's not perfect. <coughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So if you turn with me to Ezekiel 22, I'm just going to go quick. I have a few verses I want to read. I'd like to roll things a little bit um, where I left off on Sunday. Um, I don't know if I'll get to it or not. I don't know. Like, I didn't even know I was going to read this till I got in here tonight. And I just begin to uh, listen to the Spirit because God, God has determined something. He, he has predetermined something. And because you and I are alive at this particular time, this is, we're, we're alive right now, literally physically breathing breath in a time-space dimension, that because we have been enlightened to the truth, that we came out of God for a purpose, and that we must return to God with the purpose totally fulfilled. That is nothing to do with going to some particular place in the universe. It has everything to do with the realm of God's Spirit, which, by the way, is here. The sooner you and I are able to break through the veil of our flesh, our naturalness, the more we will begin to see Him. I pray all the time, God, tear it from top to bottom like you did. Let us walk through the veil of the flesh. Let's follow Him in through the veil of the flesh, that wherever He is, there we are with Him also. So in Ezekiel uh, 22, like, I'm just going to skim this really, really fast. Um, verse 25 says there's a conspiracy from the prophets. Uh, verse 26, her pri- our priests have violated the law um, and profane. Her princes in the midst are like wolves. And her prophets have daubed the uh, untempered mortar, seeing vanity, divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord. And the thing about all this is that those ones right there, show a direction of leadership, so to speak, and what has happened and what is, because this is prophetic and it still is applicable to a present truth reality. If it were not so, I'm going to tell you, we as a church system, we think we're so great, but the reality is, is we're not, we can't even stop the nonsense that goes on in our households, let alone in our schools let alone in our cities and everywhere else. So God is after something. And verse verse 29 says, The people of the land use oppression to get what they want. I'm just paraphrasing. But the verse that I wanted to really get to, and I'm going to read it, and the reason is, is because I don't know, I'm just really, I'm really in love with God and that His purpose is so magnificent and that He literally has included us even if we're only in a, like can you imagine in 1948 when 
they had what they called the Latter-day Rain movement, and it swept across, and the message of sonship came out. And I'm pretty certain, there, like if there's anybody still alive in that original uh, movement in 1948, like, um, you know, there could be, but not very many, right? There's not very many. The point is, we are now alive with a message that God birthed through them of the purpose of God, not only in the earth, but in all the creation. And if I don't do anything, I want to make sure that I rehearse it in our ears, because the next generation, like seriously, like the next generation, like, like my kids level right there, Right? And it's, it's difficult to put dividers and stuff, but in that generation, like, there's way more of you than there is of me. No, there is. Yeah. And God knows. God knew. God determined. My prayer is just no different than what my parents were understanding what God had called us to, right? And that was that God would do it in our time frame. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't violate the purpose, okay? So here he goes, verse 30. You ready? Are you there? Ezekiel 22, verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me, God, right? For the land. The earth. God's whole purpose. Look, when he created man in his likeness and his, after his, uh, uh, in his image, after his likeness in Genesis chapter 1, and then he set him in the heavens. When he formed him in the earth, the whole determination of God was to be manifested in all of his creation. In a people. 100%. And we all know because of the fall of Adam, like, I, 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 look, I've always said this, you know, and I, I, it was a repeat because I, that's the way I was taught, but I always believed that even though Adam fell, it was still plan A on the server. It never changed. We just had to go looking for it. Do a search. Find the right folder. Look for the right files. And this is what he said. He says, look, I sought for a man that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Now, I like to put a little spin in this. Drop the end. And all of a sudden we find out there is one. Now, if I asked you the question, who is that one new man? If you said Jesus, you would be right. But Jesus is not a headless man. He has a body. And like any new birth, what comes out first in a natural way? The head. And so now the body still in the womb, so to speak, or in the birth canal anyway, is coming forth. All right? Here we go. I want to read a few verses. You don't need to turn to them. Isaiah 59, verse 16. If you want to write them down, go ahead. If you want to just repeat this and listen to where they are so you can read around these verses, you'll understand what the prophet Isaiah was prophesying in Ezekiel. This is Isaiah 59, 16. And he saw that there was no man, no one, and wondered that there was no intercessor. 
Therefore, his arm, I love this. I don't have time to preach about the arm. Brought salvation unto him and his righteousness, it sustained him. Maybe someday I'll get into the whole arm and who the arm of the Lord is. Little hint. What looks like an arm? A branch. A branch man. Okay. Isaiah 63, verse 5. And I looked, and there was none to help. And I wondered, and there was none to uphold. Who's going to stand in the gap? Who's going to intercede? Therefore my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. In Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem and see now and seek in the broad places thereof if you can find a man. If there be any that executes judgment or the verdict, that seeks the truth. You worship Him. You have to worship Him in spirit and truth. Well, most pursue God's love. The truth of the matter is about His love. He can cover all your problems over and over and over and over and again. But the question you will always have, why do I keep repeating the same stuff over and over and over again? It's because the truth makes us, forms us, shapes us, liberates us, frees us. From what? Missing the mark. He looked for a man. If you can find a man, what is the creation groaning for? They already have God's love. They have it. 100% of God's love has been shed upon us. We are lacking none of His love. Not one bit. We have so much of His love, that's all most folks can talk about. And the problem will never be God's love. The issue has been spirit and truth. Because the truth will reveal a man, child. The creation groans for the manifestation of a man, child. A son. That looses us from an earth realm mentality and causes us to live in a heavenly realm. Yeah, this is what the creation longs for. They don't even long for just knowing doctrine. They long for, they search for a man. Now we could attribute this these scriptures to the Old Testament prophets. And we can say that Jesus fulfilled these scriptures by becoming the sacrifice, the man that stood between God and man. But in order for, like, can I, I, I don't, like, God doesn't need anything. God, he's not short. And Jesus hasn't come up short of the purpose. 
let me say this. I'll tell you right now, Jesus hasn't come up short of the purpose, but it hasn't been fulfilled. How do you know that? This is what Paul wrote. I'm confident in this very thing, that he who began a work you have never seen before. How do you know? Because we've looked and we haven't found it. It has never existed in the earth ever before. Well, all the church is going to give you the doctrines of Jesus only. Jesus himself. The incarnation of who he is within a people who lay down their lives. They fall on the sword. They fall on the rock. So that the rock does not pulverize them. Because most church folks are arrogant and think they know everything. They're always trying to prove it. But the creation groans. It's looking for something. Someone. They've never seen. Someone who will stand in between. Make up the hedge. When most folks are trying to fight what they believe is more true than what someone else is telling them. The creation's looking for a man child to let the prisoner go free. Yeah. And God has marked us for this purpose. Eye hasn't seen it. Ear hasn't heard it. Neither has it even entered into the heart of those who what? Love him. Love him. Love him. Amen. So now turn with me to Revelation chapter 19. This is where we were on Sunday. I've got to get moving or I'll never get done. There's so much to say. Uh, I could just keep going, but I won't. Verse 7. I finished off. This was the last verse I read. And the reason I want to read this verse again. Do you remember this? And I heard, verse 6, and I heard as it were a voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah for the Lord, omnipotent, he what? He reigns. Where does God want to reign? Where does God want to reign, Dale? He wants to reign out of you. Not reign from the sky, but reign. R-E-I. Not R-A-I. Verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Revelation chapter 12. I don't have time to go read the rest of this. You could go read, and and it talks about the army of God, and it's talking about Joel's army, and it it literally is the man-child. Or can I say this? I just read some verses. It was God's right arm. It's his arm. Another place, it's called his battle axe. Remember this? Remember what Jesus said? And the works that I do, you will do. But they'll be what? Greater. Because it'll come to an end. 
And because it's not a, God's not mystic. He's not spooky spiritual. He's not magical. He doesn't say abracadabra or in the name of Jesus all the time. He moves by spirit. And he speaks words of truth. Where the light pierces and penetrates the darkness. Oh, that I would have a man that could stand in the gap and make up the hedge. No self-interest. They love me with all of their heart. Revelation chapter 12, you know this. I, I don't have time to read too many of these verses. I just want to get moving because I want to read something. And the woman, right? Verse 5, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations or shepherd or feed or rule. Destroy darkness with strength of light. With a rod of iron. Who is the rod of iron? Oh wait, that's Jesus. A rod shall come out of the stem of Jesse. Rod, Jesus, stem, David. And he shall have a branch. Remember this? The mustard seed is like the kingdom of God. It's the small one. We're not talking about, but he said he planted it and it grew to the biggest tree. And then it says that the fowls of the air were able to come and rest in it. Those who had a heavenly mindset, they weren't celestial, or no, terrestrial, they were celestial. But you have to have a tree to rest in. You have to have branches. And she brought forth a man-child, a rod of iron, and her child was caught up Up above, not another place over there, caught up unto or into God and to his throne. Where's the throne of God? The kingdom of God is where? Within you. Within you. Turn with me to Luke. I, I, I would love to read all over the place, but I can't tonight. I just don't have time. Like maybe I'll save some for Sunday. Or just... Oh, hallelujah. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. What did the lamb's wife do? She made herself what? Ready. For what purpose? To birth. A man child. And what's the man child for? Someone who will what? Stand in the gap. Stand in the gap. Luke 12. I think around verse 35. Let's see. Yes, verse 35. I don't. I, um, verse 34 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You always will know, right? Let your loins be girded about. Peter said, gird up the loins of your mind. What do you think he's telling you to gird up the loins of your mind with? Truth. Not facts. Truth. Truth. It's a person. Truth. What are you supposed to pursue? Truth. Let your loins be girt about and your lights burning, and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. When he uh, will return from the wedding, <laughs> there you go, that when he cometh and knocketh, that they may open unto him. When? Immediately. Why? Why would they even know? Or how would they know? They're watching. They're ready. They're pursuing. They're making sure. 
Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when He comes, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that He shall gird Himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if He shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore, what? Ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not, or when you're least prepared. You want to be served or be a servant? The other day I was flipping, looking for something, a, a, a message on YouTube, you know, and I, I landed on some church out in Seattle, and people are still fighting the battle. You're not a servant. You're a son. You've got to grow up. It's the heart of the Father to be both. The whole point of Galatians chapter 4 was about an Egyptian heart being a slave to sin. When unfortunately far too many of us still are. We just don't think so. But you can't see the man, child. Well, if it doesn't work out here, I'll just go somewhere else. I'll just serve another God. And of course, it will always be somebody else's fault. Always. Now listen to this. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or to everyone? I love Jesus. He doesn't answer him. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful? Well, he does, but he just answers them in a different way. Like, this is, what he's, this is what he's saying to them. Like, does this fit you? Then yes. I'm talking to you. And does it fit them? Then yes. I'm talking to them. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful? Remember, I just told you this on Sunday. Good to have to be faithful. Patient and dutiful unto obedience. It's the thing that will bring about, oh my God, I want to jump the vision of a man-child, a people that have made themselves ready. They're prepared. They don't even care what people think anymore. They can do all the hollering they want. The only thing they care about is the master's voice because they've come to the realization they're a love slave to the truth. Their ear has been bored to the doorpost. Who is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household or family? to give them their portion. You know, in one place, when he sent the disciples out, he says, whoever sins you remit, they're remitted. The ones you retain, it's because they just wouldn't change. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. You know, I was doing my exercises last night, man, and I was like straining. <laughs> And I just kind of just broke out and started crying and saying, God, I'm only sweating sweat. Another man, human, would have died by the beating he took. And the beating was so bad that no matter how bad it got, couldn't kill him. That's why they kept beating him. And finally, the, then they finally had to stop beating him. Pilate said, stop. 
Can't kill him. We've got to put him on the cross. Because you kill him here, we've no sense of putting him on the cross. They just didn't realize they couldn't kill him. He paid a price for us to prepare for the purpose of our Father who has determined this long before you and I showed up in the earth. He'll give them their portion of meat in due season. Due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find him doing so. Like, what did it say? Duty. You know what duty is? Occupy. Do the business. Occupy till I come forth. Be faithful, patient, and occupy. Do the business. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delays his coming. I don't know why, but I've been saying it for like a few weeks now. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. So we should never, ever have the mentality or voice the words, where is he? We'd, we'd throw God out if we really... We'd, you'd throw me out if you thought I... If I said something like, you know, God orchestrates everything. He's sovereign. Because His ultimate intention is to have a son. A many-membered son. Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren. He begins to beat his men servants, his maid servants, to eat and drink, and he gets drunk. In other words, he's just enjoying life. Now, like you and I, we wouldn't beat our men servants or maid servants, like, but we'll loose our tongues or thoughts or attitudes on one another, privately, secretly, openly, any way that moves our little fancy. Because we just don't really believe God is here. Help me, Jesus. And I guarantee you, this servant justified his actions. It was justifiable. Verse 46, And the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he doesn't, he's not looking for him. And in an hour when he's not aware, I can't believe this has happened. And we'll cut him asunder and we'll appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Now this isn't unbelievers acting this way. It's those that have been marked for the high calling. And verse 47, this is the verse I really wanted to get to, I think. Yes, it is. Here we go. Just follow me here. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will and prepared not. Neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. The creation groans for a people who have been processed, prepared, made free so that someone can look upon them and see. First Fruit Company. And I really do believe this. You're going to have to be alive and remain to be in that company. What about all those folks that have went a bit? Like God has already designed the plan how it's going to 
take place. But there must be a people who overcome on the earth because this is what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15. I show you a mystery, not all. We, he used the word we in the body, shall not all sleep, but they shall be changed. And I told you the devil that you and I have to fight the most that's between our ears is that we've heard it for so long. How can it be true? And then we will think he has delayed and not prepare for the purpose that God has marked us for. Oh, he's come to change our waters. You've got the word, oh, sons and daughters. It's time to turn God loose. Turn God loose. He's just made me an arrow. Whether you're my, you know, it doesn't matter what our natural relationship is to one another. It has no bearing. It just makes it maybe sweeter. Well, God drew me into something. Like, I was born in my mom and dad's family. My mom and dad were sold out, and after this, I didn't say they were perfect. I said they were sold out. But when God apprehended me at 24 years old, he changed my waters. And like a polished shaft, He has shot me into darkness to turn on the light. And if you need any proof, just go talk to Sherry. She never even knew that Jesus came so that he could what? Live inside of you. Not just to, you know, make you a good little nice, you know, Christian. Don't read Matthew 24. False Christ literally is false Christians. My people who are called by my name. No, he called us to prepare for purpose. Purpose. Father, I love you, and I thank you. I thank you for your word. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love that makes this all tangible to us and how you have drawn us into yourself. So I pray tonight, God, in spite of me, but yet, in releasing you, turn your word loose. Overtake us. I, as just one person, God, willing to find my place in your body, to stand in the gap, to make up the hedge, to create a void of all shortfalls, so that God, you can be the all in all. And because God, you know, I cannot do it as one single person by myself. You have joined a crowd. Sweet, holy God, that we can release a light into the darkness of the Gentiles, whether they call themselves Jews or Greeks, it matters not. For God, you have determined, oh, hallelujah, God, you've determined that your arm will bring you full salvation. Spirit, 
soul, and body. You know why God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked? It's because their life is over when they go in the ground. Like Judas, they would have been better off never being born. And so he is telling us to prepare. I don't even want to read farther in this chapter. You go right ahead. But this is what it says. I, I believe it's here. I don't know. I'm getting mixed up. But I think it is. Too much is given. Much will be required. Well, I never asked for this. You're right. He's God. He chooses. We just must choose. Amen? Zion heard and was glad that God has a man to fill in the gap. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.